Oi. Yeah, yeah, that would be taught in suturing and uh, different other sorts of nursing practices. I hope so. Um, one possibility is that prisoners were able to actually find jobs in the medical industry on the outside after this. We only have two actual confirmed examples of that, though, so we don't know whether that was widespread or not. You guys can come in. Don't be shy. Mm -hmm. So this operating room is opened in 1910. The chief surgeon at the time um, talks about you know, the, the benefits of this and says that prior to opening this operating room, they were operating on prisoners in their cells. Mm. This method, he said, was up to luck as much as skill. A few things that you're missing in cells. This room is quite dark, <laughs> not something you want for a surgery. At the time, this is actually open to the sky. It's a massive skylight. You can kind of see from this picture in 1912, the yeah. light pouring in from here. Mm. Uh, there's some early electric, electric light here, too, helping out a bit. Eventually, they add this new fixture over here that has four lights um, sometime in the 30s, 40s, or 50s. Uh, they are able to practice all manner of surgeries here um, because most of the physicians here are connected to other medical figures in the city of Philadelphia. So mm -hmm. being proximate to the city gives the prison a huge advantage in terms of medical treatment in here. Um, they could perform uh, ophthalmological surgery, eye surgery. They could perform open heart surgery, neurosurgery. Al Capone had two surgeries in here. One was a tonsillectomy, mm -hmm. and another was an unknown one <laughs> that they never identified. Um, this is something that is practically unheard of um, in a prison now. To get a hospital transfer in a prison is a, is a quite difficult thing. Um, some prisoners are have been reported to just be lying on their beds for weeks, sort of slowly dying from a various infection or ailment. Uh, the New Yorker reported a case of one prisoner who had a broken femur and was told by his doctor to practice breathing methods for that. Uh, <laughs> Sometimes prisoners can get transferred to the hospital for emergency surgeries, but a lot of prisons are pretty far away from hospitals. So if you really need that care, it's going to take quite a while to transfer you there. It might be too late by then. Um, so having on-site treatment was a huge boon for this place. There were about 1,500 deaths here. I think that number would have been quite a bit higher if this hospital didn't exist. Not to say it was always great. Prisoners did talk about, you know, coming here and having broken bones and getting painkillers for it. Don't want to glorify it too much. It's good for a prison hospital, but it is still a prison hospital. Any questions? Final questions about anything? Do you know how many surgeries were performed here, or is it just a guess? That's a good question. I don't know. That's pretty, you probably have that record somewhere of how many total surgeries there were. I, I want to say I read somewhere that there was something on the order of thousands, but that's just a number. What's this, what was the success rate?